gospel is a whole load of what they call the I am statements. Jesus saying, I am this, I am that, I'm the vine, I'm the resurrection, the life, I'm the, uh, the bread of life. And he does it in a way because in some ways it's very difficult to, to actually picture God. He does it in a way that we can understand. So Jesus really is helping us to understand who God is. And he comes here and he says, I am the good shepherd. So you know, um, obviously what a shepherd is, it's a shepherd is, is someone who looks after the sheep. And in one sense as human beings we're all like sheep. Um, without being rude, sheep are a bit stupid. <laughs> yeah, and compared to God, even the most intelligent man or woman is is a fool, is stupid. You know, we see things so much, but we don't see the big picture. We don't see things in the way that that God wants us to see. And one of the things with with sheep is that that they tend to follow different people. Some sheep follow other sheep. If, if uh, you've got a flock of sheep and some go in one direction, some will go after those and follow them. But as human beings, we all tend to follow someone. You may object to that and think, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm a strong, I have strong convictions and I, you know, I just follow myself, I don't follow anyone else. I just do what I want to do and I go the way that I want to go. But ultimately, we're all following someone, even though we think that, that we've got our own ideas and we're, we're following ourselves. We ultimately all follow someone. Sometimes... These things are like little fads, you know, certain trends that might come in, things that, that were perhaps in trend when you were a teenager. If you were to do them now, everyone would, would think you were stupid. No offence, yeah? <laughs> Apart from the young ones here, because you're still hip and with it, yeah? But, um, but trends come. Some things we follow don't really have much consequences. But when it comes to, to things about life and death, we need to be sure who we're following. We need to be sure that we're in the right way. So for a, for a couple of years, um, Gemma, my wife, and, and I, we, we spent a, a bit of time out in Africa. And it was in a Muslim context. And, you know, part of the thing with the Muslims is that they have these five pillars and, and they have to pray so many times a day and things like that. Um, and there was this Muslim guy there who was, you know, it was the time to pray and he got his mat down and he prayed. And there was one of the Christians who was with us, and he just said to him, he said, why are you doing that? And I'm not saying that all Muslims don't know why they're praying, but this guy goes, I don't know, just, it's just what we do. It's just what we do. Just following it. But how many people, you know, why do you support that football team? Or why do you, why do, you do this? Why do you do that? Why do you believe that? Why do you believe the other? It's just what we do. We can be blind, we can just be like sheep following um, our own ways. So, in one sense, we're all led by someone. But Jesus comes in and he says that he's the good shepherd. So he's saying, look, if, if you want to be led by anyone in the world, there's only one person to be led by, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So he says these words in, in John's Gospel in chapter 10. And the context of it, if you were to look at verse 22... It says, at that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem, yeah? So, the Feast of Dedication, also called Hanukkah, if you're familiar with the Jewish festival. But one of the things that, that the, Jewish, the Jews would read at Hanukkah was Ezekiel 34. Now, this is a bit in the Old Testament before Jesus came. And it it's really it talks about the bad shepherds of Israel. So, he's talking about the bad leaders of the country, you know, whether they'd be the religious leaders... Um, or the, the politicians, the kings, you know, the spiritual leaders. But Jesus is basically highlighting and saying that as a nation, Israel's had bad shepherds. And these are the things that the bad shepherds did, if I just read them. That they don't take care of the flock. They haven't strengthened the weak. They've not healed the sick. They've not bound up the injured. They've not brought back the strays. They've not searched for the lost. And they've ruled those under their care harshly and brutally. Jesus is accusing them of being bad shepherds. And in, in our text, he's, he's linking this. The, old, the bad shepherds of the, in history in Israel, he's linking it to the current leaders at the time, the Pharisees. And he's saying, you religious leaders in, in Israel, you are these bad shepherds. And so he says in, in verse 13, he says, 
Um, a hired hand, sorry, he's a hired hand. He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. So he's accusing the religious leaders of the time that said, you don't care about the flock. All you're trying to do is you're trying to fleece the flock for your own ends. So that's the backdrop that Jesus is, is talking about. And the reason that they don't care is because they don't have a sense of ownership of the sheep. They don't love the sheep. And that's why the sheep have become scattered. Um, and that's why the sheep, you know, when, when sheep scatter, they, they become in a very dangerous situation. There's animals out there that will attack. So he's accusing them of these things. And then he warns them of God's judgment about the people who do things like this. So I just want you to think about your own life. Who shepherded you? You might have it directly. Maybe you've been in a situation, you know, in a sense your parents shepherded you. It might be that you've grown up in a church and you've had, you know, church leaders shepherding you in a way. But even if you've, you know, not been in church or whatever, in a sense society shepherds you. When you turn the TV on, there's a message coming over which is part of leading you and feeding you, shepherding you. Have these shepherds been good to you? Have they ruled over you harshly? Have they cared about you? Have they loved you? Have they sought genuinely your best interest? In some cases they have, praise God. But in other cases we realise actually that the world's a harsh place, it's a cruel place. And the people who are in control, the people who get into positions of power and authority, they don't really care about you. They care about themselves and they want to use you for your own ends. Into that, Jesus comes and he says that he is the good shepherd. The other part of Ezekiel 34, not only does it talk about the bad shepherds of Israel and say, you've not done this, you've not done this, you've not done this. It actually speaks and points, this is hundreds of years before Jesus came, but it speaks and points about Jesus coming. Because it's God it's saying himself who says, I will do this, I will do that, I will do the other. Not some human but God himself in human form is going to send Jesus to do this. And he says, I will search for them. I will rescue them from the bad shepherds. I will bring them into the land. I will feed them with rich pasture. I will make them lie down. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the, the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. This is Jesus. He's not like the bad shepherds. He comes after the lost and the strays. And he brings them into a family. Into God's family. The best family that he can have. And he provides. And he'll heal, heal us. He saves us. He rescues us. He protects us. He leads us. He provides everything that we need. Jesus ultimately is the good shepherd because he loves us. And how do we know that he loves us? Because he was willing to lay his life down for us. He was willing to give up his life to protect us from the wolf, in a sense. Because we have an enemy who's called the devil. Jesus was willing to, to lay his life down so that we don't get destroyed by the enemy of our souls. But we can come and we can find eternal life. So Jesus comes and he looks out for the lost. It says in verse 16 of our text, it says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. So he's talking primarily to the nation of Israel, but he was saying that there's other sheep he wants to bring in. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Elsewhere, Jesus says, he says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. So Jesus has got other sheep. And he goes after, he leaves the flock and he goes out into the world to bring in his other sheep. How does he do that? Well, he did it for me by sending some guy on the street in Birmingham. He was stood there with the Bible saying, can I tell you about Jesus? He might be doing it for you today by sending me. 
to come here and to say Jesus is the good shepherd and he wants you to follow him. You need to stop following your own ways. You need to stop singing Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. You need to start doing it Jesus' way. Give your life to him. Let him shepherd you. Let him lead you. And let him take care of you. So the question I want to leave us with is, will you follow him? Have you seen your need for him? You need to be protected from the wolf, the devil himself. You can provide for yourself on one level in this life, but Jesus will provide for you everything that you need. The bad shepherds are leading you away from the path of salvation to a lost eternity. But Jesus, the good shepherd, is his calling us to come into his flock and he leads us to eternal life. He leads us to heaven. He leads us to glory. He leads us to pleasures evermore. Will you follow this good shepherd?